Have you ever read a book on biblical interpretation? Well, there's a good chance that if you're like most Christians, you probably haven't. Maybe you've been to a seminar at your church on how to study the Bible. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you've just researched some things online. Maybe you just listen to sermons. All of those are good things to do. But I really want to encourage you, if you haven't already done some reading or at least got a book on biblical interpretation, well, let's see if we can fix that. I want to recommend to you a number of books today to get you started. Even if you have never learnt Greek or anything like that, just started reading and studying the Bible in English or whatever language it is that you're working in. So, let's get into it. You know, one of the things that the internet has really done a great job of surfacing over the last, well, however long the internet's been going, is just how much discrepancy there is between different biblical or, or Christian camps, right? I mean, we don't agree on a whole bunch of different things, and frankly, we don't do a good job of dealing with those disagreements either. However, the big reason and the problem that we have that sits in behind all of that is that our interpretive methods vary a little bit. And part of the reason our interpretive methods vary is because, quite honestly, we don't always have a good understanding on interpretive method. Did you know, for instance, that the interpretive method, what is sometimes referred to as hermeneutics, is broadly agreed on by just about every scholar on the planet. Now, that's not to say there are no differences whatsoever. There are, but the methodology piece is broadly agreed to, and not just amongst Christians, but even outside of Christians. In fact, the, the field of hermeneutics, which is what interpretive method uh, means, that field of interpretive method, that, that hermeneutical field, is actually not even purely a Christian field. It's broadly understood within the secular world as well as the Christian world to have certain methodologies that go with it. However, in the Christian world, we do apply some additional elements, particularly around things like interpretation. Now, this doesn't make it particularly difficult or anything like that. It just means that there are some things that are broadly agreed on, even amongst, you know, between Christians and Christians and non-Christians. And then there are some specific things with regards to Bible interpretation that you do want to be aware of. The, the importance of this is that biblical interpretation is a critical area for us to develop. It's a skill that every Christian needs to spend some time understanding. And I want to encourage you, read the Bible. Read the Bible in Greek. Read it in Hebrew. Read it in English if you can't read those other languages. And that's great, and that's important. But when it comes to actually understanding what the author is getting at, what he means, what he's trying to tell us, and then connecting that with other elements of Scripture, there is a method that we need to understand. And if we don't have that method, we're going to make errors, and we're going to make mistakes, and we're going to go off the rails where we ought not to. So what I want to do in this video quickly is really just to give you a number of books to help you get started, or if you're a little more advanced, to keep you moving in the study of the Scripture. And so to do this, I'm going to introduce you to three books that I typically recommend for Bible interpretation. And each of these fits somewhere on a spectrum. At the one end, we've got people who have never read a book on interpretation before, who are not academic, but they want something just to get them started. On the other end, we've got a book that's pretty academic. Uh, it's a decent sort of sized tome. And then we've got one that's kind of in the middle of those two as well. Now, before we get into each of these here, let me just let you know up front that I've left links to all of these below in the description, so you can go find them. I've left links to them on Amazon, on Logos Bible Software, because all of these are in Logos Bible Software, as well as, uh, and in one case, there's a free copy on the Library of Congress, which you can download the PDF for it in the comment in the description below as well. I'm also interested, as we go through these, if one of these sparks your interest or you remember, hey, I read that book, let me know in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you there as well. And if you've got another book that I don't mention here that you think I should look at, then let me know that in the comment section as well. Let's get into it. There are a number of books that a lot of other people recommend, which may be worth looking at, but I just haven't had the time to look at. Two of those in particular are Gordon Fees and Douglas Stewart's How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth. Now, this is a great little book uh, from what I hear, but I've never really taken the time to read it. Uh, but it may be worth looking at. Another one is Robert Plummer's 40 Questions for Interpreting the Bible. This is also a very popular book and often gets recommended in various contexts as well, and so I recommend you check those two out. But those aren't the ones that I typically recommend, in partly because I've never read them, but also because this other book that I have found has been really helpful and really effective 
for people who have got no knowledge of biblical languages, who just want something simple and easy to get into. So the first book that I like to recommend is this one by Howard Hendricks, Living by the Book. This is a, a little bit bigger than, say, Gordon Fee's book and uh, Doug Stewart's book, but it's still pretty accessible. And the thing about this is it's written for people who have got, you know, you may not have ever been to university. Uh, it's, a, it's a very much a lay person's book and it's very accessible. It has a threefold approach to coming to the scripture and is observe, observe the text, what does it say? Interpret the text, what does it mean? And then apply the text, how do I live this out? And he's got some really helpful tips in here for helping you do that and it's very practical. And he builds them out so basically you're sort of counting on your hands and if you can remember your, you know, what finger stands for what thing, you can pretty much remember all the principles that he lays out in here. He also gives you in here uh, things like helps with tools, when you're gonna to wanna to use a concordance, if anybody today still uses concordances, uh, dictionaries, handbooks, atlases, uh, commentaries and so on, when to use them, when not to use them, what to be aware of and so on. This is very well written. It's very down to earth, very accessible and, and Howard Hendricks is a very good clear thinker. So this is a great book to have and if you've never read a book on Bible interpretation, this is always the one I recommend first because it's just so practical and on top of that, if you're interested in running a little uh, home group or something like that where you learn how to study the Bible together, this is a great book for that as well. It's got little exercises you can do at the end of each chapter to sort of get you into it which you can then sort of talk about together as a group. So that's my go-to book for uh, the bottom rung of the ladder if you like. This is a very accessible book and I recommend this pretty much all the time. Hey, if you love reading and studying the Bible, could you hit the like button because that helps people know that videos like this are good because they help you like and study the Bible. Let's get back into it. Now, if you're a little further down the track and you want something just a little bit deeper, perhaps, a little more academic, maybe something that's going to explore genres and, and sort of talk about the, the literature of Scripture a little bit, or maybe even the history of Bible interpretation, then this little book here by uh, Basic Bible Interpretation by Roy Zuck, uh, this is also a very good book. Now, again, this is a little dated, so is the Howard Hendricks book. Uh, these are both older books, but they've stood the test of time, and they keep getting reprinted and reused, and you will encounter this in a lot of college classes on biblical interpretation uh, and so on. So this is a great little book. It does include explanations, things like uh, the Bible as literature, it talks about genre and the distinctions between genre and how to interpret genre. It talks about things like figures of speech, metaphors, how they use. He talks about hyperbole. Hendrix talks a little bit about those things as well. Uh, this also explains in more detail some of the gaps between the original authors and you and I today and then how to bridge those with a bit more you know, depth and finesse. Uh, so this is good. It also discusses distinctions between the Old Testament and the New Testament and how the New Testament interprets the Old Testament. Uh, it is written from a dispensational point of view. Uh, if you're not dispensational, you want to be aware of that. But really, that only affects uh, the, the chapter there at the end on, you know, how the Old New Testament interprets the Old Testament. So for the most part, everything else in this, everybody should be able to get at and, and make, you know, benefit from. Uh, and for what it's worth, just while we're talking about dispensational and covenantal kind of thinking, my view on that is that both of these camps tend to talk past one another. They use the same terms, but they mean different things quite often. And that means that, you know, when they talk about things like continuity and discontinuity, you know, what exactly is continued, what is discontinued, you know, and how do we understand that? Those sorts of things are often, there's a lot of talking past one another. So, uh, honestly, in a book like this, this is just a good all round, down to earth, easy to read book. It's a little more academic than Hendrix, but it's not gonna be too heavy from an academic point of view. So this is a good middle of the ground uh, book that I often will recommend. And there's a lot of other books in the category that's similar to this, uh, that have that similar light academic approach as well, and they're all worth, you know, often they're worth looking at as well. There are a number of more academic books though, and that's really where I want to take you now. If you are after something a little bit richer, a little bit deeper, something that does challenge you a little bit more to read, then I typically recommend Invitation to Biblical Hermeneutics by Kostenberger and Patterson. Now, this has a really good introductory chapter that walks through a whole bunch of different elements. It's got some a couple of chapters on the canon of Scripture, how we got the Bible, which I think is helpful as well. Uh, it talks about things like New Testament uh, use of the Old. This time, this is a covenantal-oriented book. It's not overly harsh on that, so it's, it's a reasonable balance, I think. Um, 
And the bulk of this is really focused on genres. And so again here, you're going to go into a lot of examples around different genres and how the genre is used and how we should be interpreting the genre and so on. So this is really good. It also has a, a really good section. This differentiates it really from Zuck uh, and, and Hendrix, but mostly from Zuck, in the sense that it has a really good section here on language and it will talk about things like word studies, how the languages work, word order in the original languages, discourse analysis, how to understand a pericope and delineated pericope and so on. So this has got a lot more in it. It's a lot thicker as you can see. Um, it's about six, seven hundred pages I think it is. Uh, I actually once had to read this in a week for my doctoral studies, um, which is always an adventure. Uh, that was a heavy reading week, but I don't recommend you read this in a week. Just take your time working through it or even use it as a reference. Um, but I encourage you to, if you want something a little bit richer, a little bit deeper, this is really good. Now that's not to say I agree with everything in any of these, but I've just found each of these to be a really helpful introductory grammar, or in this case, a introductory grammar, listen to me, or an introductory book on interpretation, or in this case, a, a more advanced book on interpretation as well. Now before I go, if you're not, if you don't have a whole lot of money and you're like, well this is all very good Daryl, but really I just want something that I can get off the internet for free, because there's always someone who watches my videos who wants it for free, right? So let me give you two books, one which is free and one which is not, but it's also very good and it fits into that middle kind of category as well. So the first one, if you're on a budget and you want a good and sort of more advanced grammar, it kind of sits, this one sits in between Zuck and Kostenberger and Patterson, then the one that I would encourage you to go to, and if you can't afford something, is uh, The Biblical Hermeneutics by Milton Terry. Biblical Hermeneutics by Milton Terry. This is a really old uh, book on interpretation, but it is still quoted by almost every interpretive book today. And you can get it for free. In fact, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can actually download the PDF from the Library of Congress totally free. This is also a good one to have on Kindle uh, or Logos. And in fact, just let me make a note while I'm making this, this is actually for sale for like $2 on Kindle, $2.99 I think it on Kindle right now if you want to get a copy of it. So that's worth doing if you, you know, normally it's like $50 or something like that. So well worth doing that. But Milton Terry is really good as well. And I want to encourage you if you're wanting something for free, then that's a good starting point. Another one that is well worth considering if you're wanting something a little lighter, it's not kind of, it's in the same kind of category as Zuck, but perhaps maybe from a more covenantal perspective is Bernard Ram's Protestant Biblical Interpretation. This is uh, also, also a classic, it's been reprinted like three times and it's well worth uh, taking a look at as well. So those are my recommendations but I'm interested in what you say, what you reckon is helpful. To, let me know in the comment section below what you've found useful in terms of books on interpretation, what you've read. Uh, I'd love to look at those and, and hear from you down there as well. And if you are interested in learning Greek and really being able to dig into something like this, then go get my roadmap to mastery at masterntgreek.com slash roadmap which will lay out a path for how to go from learning, knowing no Greek to being able to read the entire New Greek New Testament uh, without looking words out, without looking, you know, depending on tools or reader's editions or anything like that. So again, thanks so much for watching. I look forward to serving you in the next video. Until then, keep taking small consistent steps toward mastery. We'll see you then.